All right, guys, here is the suit all put together, and I gotta say, very, very impressed. And if you guys watched my unboxing video of the Iron Man suit, which we'll be reviewing in the very near future, I mentioned that it, it seemed to remind me a lot of the Ultraman 1-6 scale kit that I built a while back. And I was as I was building this, I was feeling that more and more. So I checked and it is actually from the same company. So from the same company that made that 1-6 scale Ultraman kit that I built a while back. Anyway, so that kit was quite solid. This one feels even better. Of course, it's in a smaller scale, which I think is better. 1-6 is just kind of too big for this, but 1-9 is a really nice scale for these. It's big, it's very solid but and, and like there are some small parts on that but it's there's nothing like too super tiny on it really be able to get a, a lot of nice detail in there without making it inaccessible to people who don't really build a lot of models i think it's not that challenging of a kit to build but let's go ahead and get into it there's a lot to go through in terms of all the effect parts accessories and everything that we need to talk about and just the mate the kit itself so let's go ahead and kick it off first off looking at the leds and i gotta tell you guys putting this kit together and putting in the leds i was just very much enamored with how good the leds work on this kit and just very disappointed why bend i can't do more like this so you guys saw in the unboxing that not only were the LEDs, you know, small, pretty simple, and the batteries were included, but they work really super well as well too. So for the one in the chest, actually you see that little triangle right there is actually a piece that is just made to be on kind of like a little hinge. They can push it as a button. It'll hit the switch for the LED inside there. So you just push that pops the LED on and the LED is very bright as well too it looks really good in there now, unfortunately the one for the head there it doesn't have any button you have to remove the top of the head for that but it's simple enough to do just pop off the top there's the batteries and everything the switch is right there I just, I just use this part of the head to hit the button it's easy enough just hit that pop the head back on and there you go the LEDs work really super well they're really bright and I mean, I'm just this is just using the included batteries. So I mean, I, don't, I can't imagine that the batteries are like really top of the line batteries by any means as well too. So those work really well. If you, especially if you got like some more expensive, I guess maybe better brand batteries or something. I guess they it would work for even longer or brighter or something. But even as they are, they work really nice. As for the stickers that you guys saw kind of mangled in my unboxing, I threw a couple of them on just for the sake of it. Just these ones here on the arm, the front, and back of the arm. There they look. I mean fine enough from a distance, but they don't really go on that well. And some of them are like, they're, they're covering up some detail in there. So I just wouldn't really advise using those. If you really want it to be more color accurate, I would say you're probably just gonna have to paint it and you have to gonna mask and paint those gold sections. So there is some sections of it that are not completely color accurate uh, that will be made up just by those stickers. But I would say you kind of just don't really need it as well too, unless you really want it to be super color accurate. I mean, you could try using the stickers, but let's go ahead and then take a look at the hands then too. So we have the hands with just these kind of open resting ones. And you guys saw in the unboxing, we had these jewels that you're supposed to place in the center of the hands. I only placed them here on these kind of open shooting hands just because that seemed to kind of make the most sense. Otherwise, you're not really going to see them all that much, but you have those little jewels to stick in all the hands. You also have these open expressive hands, kind of open shooting hands, but then you have another version of those as well too here. That's going to be ones with pegs on there for plugging the effect parts into there. So we'll see those in here in just a second. Fourth and final set of hands here then is just going to be closed fists. So those will also be coming in handy surely. Then we've got the drone pieces, which come in two different sizes. So you've got four of this type of one here. It's like a little bit longer. You got those cool clear blue effect parts in there. They look really nice. A ton of detail on them. You can see there's a number of layered parts there between the blue and gold plastic and these little detail parts and everything on there those look really nice and then you've got two of the smaller type and these are going to be kind of arranged in a way for making the kind of shield or the blast effect part there uh, that you can use these for so here are our effects that you're going to be able to use either in the hands or on the feet or from the backpack parts so you got these kind of yellow blast ones there and you got kind of a longer type version of those for shooting or blasting whatever and you can swap out the middle part if you wanted to have this shorter piece in there rather than the longer one so you got some options with how you want to use those and you've got your kind of main big blue one there for the backpack for like your main blast parts there with another backpack I guess the drone it seems like a backpack sort of so we'll see all those in use then shortly but the other main accessory then here is just going to be the base so on the base there the, I mentioned in the unboxing that those were foil stickers but they're not actually stickers it's just like a foil paper basically just stick in there so it's not actually stuck to anything which is good it's easy to take out if you wanted to take this out and then just repaint it or something like that this base part and then those clear plastic pieces go over the top so it makes a really nice look here for the bottom of that and this piece, you can take out the metal rod that's inside of there. You can remove that and then you could bend this if you wanted to. For the moment, I just have kept the metal rod in there to just keep it straight. At the top here, you've got two different connection arms. This one for holding the suit and there's, and you can open and close that. There's like a little locking piece in here though as well too. 
you can remove that little piece and then that would actually, uh, you're able to open that up and you got, that's where your like, kind of sponge goes on there to hold onto the model without scratching the plastic or anything like that. And you got a little spring in there to keep that nice and tight closed. Then once you got the model in there, you just stick that locking piece in there, it'll hold that nice and well. And then this piece up here at the top for holding the drone parts it does seem a little bit looser, but I think it should probably be fine. This can be adjusted. You can adjust the height by undoing this little latch there. That'll kind of loosen that little bit. You can move it up and down as you wish. And then of course you can change the angle of this as well too. It's on a ratchet system. You might want to loosen the screw. I haven't done that. So that's why it's a little bit tight, but there's a screw you can loosen and then change the angle of that and everything as well too. So really nice base for this. Seems like definitely something the more that you would see like with a, an expensive figure rather than a much uh, a kit, but you know, it's cool. And then I just also want to take a look at some of the articulation of the kit then. Of course, it's got a lot of nice articulation aside from just being very nicely detailed. The head will go up to there for some nice flying poses all the way down to there. You basically got a double ball joint at the top and bottom of the neck. So you got plenty of movement there of the neck, of course, side to side and basically kind of every which way you might want to move that. The shoulder will swing out to the front there. There's an interior part that kind of swings out of the body like that. This little flap on the top is also a separate piece there and this flap above the shoulder is also a separate piece that will move on its own. But because of these parts around there, it's a little bit difficult to get the shoulder very high. That seems about to be about the extent of how high you can get the arm up before you're getting kind of uh, awkward there with those pieces. So then we've got some rotation here at the top of the arm and the elbow joint is made in a way so that when it pulls, actually the interior part kind of like pulls out of the arm a little bit to be able to get a bend there and have it not looking too awkward. It still looks a bit odd to imagine that there's actually an arm in there, an elbow. It doesn't really seem like that would actually work, but you know, as far as the kit goes, you can get a good solid full basically 180 degree bend out of that, which is nice. And this kind of guard above the hand also is just like little on a little ball joint so that can move around to uh, basically just cover the hand. The hand is also just on a simple ball joint there, pretty easy. Around here on the backpack, you have these flaps which will open up like that. You can get all of those open up. You got a lot of nice detail underneath there. A nice detail on the outside too. It's all color separated, those bits of gold and blue. That looks really nice. In the midsection, you've got a kind of double ball joint between the top half of the torso, the bottom half of the torso, and the hip section. It's kind of three main parts. So you've got ball joints between them, uh, but not a whole lot of movement just because the armor just doesn't really allow for much movement. You can see side to side, it's pretty good. Forward and back though, you're not really gonna be able to move it too much. I think just because again, this armor, it would have to like fold in on itself or something and it's just not able to do that. So not a ton of movement in this torso section. Obviously rotation here also gonna be a little bit limited, unfortunately. But then going down to the hip section, those actually work pretty well. You can bring this out to the side and all the way out like that really easily and forward and back really easily like that too. So the hip, hip articulation works really nicely and the armor does kind of, you can see how it folds in or these tucks up in into that part uh, to get the movement that you need. Again, it looks a bit unnatural to think that there's actually a leg in there, but you know, aside from that, it does uh, move really well. You got a good, nice, solid, full bend there at the knee too as well with this nice separation of the armor bit there. That looks nice. And once more, when I move it, you can see this panel here on the back of the leg actually moves as well too to make a uh, way for the knee joint there. So that's kind of cool. This little armor panel moves a little bit. These armor panels down here at the bottom also move a little bit as well too, just on the back of the feet for when you're moving the feet back, which unfortunately you can't really do all that much. They only go back a little bit like that, but forward and back a little bit, side to side a little bit, not a ton of movement here at the ankles, but underneath the feet there you can see what that's gonna look like. And that is where you can plug in your effect parts. These little ones like this will just plug right into there for the feet for making it look like she's flying along there like that. So overall the articulation is pretty good. You should be able to do some nice posing with this. But even if you can't, even if you're limited to you know only doing a few certain poses really well, that's kind of really all it needs to do, right? Just the kind of the main poses. And for a size reference for you guys, this kit comes to be at right about 21 centimeters in height. So it's a little bit kind of taller than your standard master grade kit basically. There it is compared to an HG and a PG-1 60 scale Gundam and 1144 scale Gundam. So like I said before, it's a good solid size. It's a big, but not overly big, I think, like the Ultraman 1.6 scale kit was. So I think 1 9th is a really nice scale for these type kits. So there you have it guys, we'll get it up on the stand here, try out some different action poses, but I think ultimately it's a very cool kit, definitely. I mean, honestly, I think it does pull off the action poses, the flying poses pretty well, but I would just kind of prefer to just keep it standing, honestly. I mean, it looks really nice just standing there. And the, like I said, the LED looks really cool. The fact that not only the LED looks cool is that it's easy to turn on. You don't have to disassemble anything. You need to pull off the part on the top of the head. That's easy enough, but especially the chest ones, just you can just press the button. That's so nice to be able to just do that and not have to 
to disassemble anything and it looks good so that's awesome but yeah having it up on the base it, it's cool I've never really been a big fan of this type of like uh, connection for bases where it's just like a little like a C clamp thing that just kind of grabs the kit around the waist there it just looks kind of dumb I don't really like the look of it but that's what you got to do on kits like this there's not really any good place to plug a base onto there unless you want to like screw a hole into the back or drill a hole <laughs> choose my words better drill a hole into the back of the kit and then you could just you know just stick a rod into there or an action base adapter or something like that I think could work uh, just as well I think and probably what I would ultimately end up doing if I decided I wanted to have this uh, ultimately painted and displayed in like an action pose flying or something like that but the kit itself looks great the effect parts are really cool as well too my long yellow ones there are a little bit bent and so I guess that could work well depending on the pose you wanted to do if I needed to straighten them out you know it's as easy as just putting them in some hot water or just using hair dryer or heat gun or something like that uh, just to straighten out those yellow effect parts not a big deal but everything works really well the drones actually work quite well as well too if you want to have them posed in front of the kit it's a little bit more of a challenge with that whole apparatus of clear parts just like plugging into the front of the hands it's a bit awkward but it does you know if you look at it from the right angle it looks really cool it's only if you look at it kind of from the back side it looks a bit odd but otherwise i mean i think this kit is quite successful and like i said it's a good size good detail good leds better ingredients better pizza <laughs> so i highly recommend it for you, for you guys and the Iron Man kit, I think, is going to be really exciting as well, too. Now that I've had a taste building uh, the rescue kit here, I'm definitely looking forward to building up the Iron Man one as well, too. So that'll be coming up very soon. I got a, a bunch of videos kind of like already lined up for you guys. So not next, but uh, sometime very soon, I'll have the review for the Iron Man kit coming out for you guys as well. But definitely check these kits out on USA Gundam Store. We've got both of them currently up for pre-order at the moment. They should be on the way uh, to the store, arriving there anytime now. So probably by the time the review of the Iron Man kit comes out, they might have them in store already. So if you're interested, you know, get your pre-orders in before those come in. So just make sure you can get your hands on one. These type of kits out of China don't often get reproduced. So probably if you don't like get it in the first batch, it's kind of up in the air whether they're going to actually make any further batches or not. So just a heads up to you guys if you are liking what you see with this kit. But anyway, if you have any other further questions or comments about this, of course, do feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that is greatly appreciated as well, too. So until next time, I hope you guys are all having a great day. I'll see you later. Bye, everyone.